Hey, welcome to a uh, Sequence Breaker commentary. I am Sid, and I am playing Pajama Sam. No need to hide when it's dark outside. Also known as Don't Fear the Dark. Pajama Sam, Don't Fear the Dark for the Wii. I don't have the Wii version. I grew up with the PC version, and I believe this is well. This is an early Humongous game, at least. Actually, not really early. It, it came out, I think, in the middle of Humongous Games' um, history. So, you know. But I think this was probably one of their best games. And I believe it's it was designed by Ron Gilbert, who uh, did the Monkey Island games, you know. Well, I didn't, I didn't play those games, uh, sad to say. But he did recently do a game called The Cave for the... Well, for every... Every major console now, you can get the cave. You can get it for Xbox 360, PS3, PC, and the Wii U, which is what I played it on. And yeah, the cave is a pretty good game. Check it out. You should really check it out. So anyway, Pajama Sam is about this young man who is who has blue skin and really messy hair. And he worships this superhero named Pajama Man, who for some reason wears pajamas. And I don't really know what his superpowers are besides having a magic lunchbox and flashlight, whatever. Whatever, uh, Sam worships this Pajama Man, so much so that he created his own alter ego called Pajama Sam. And Pajama Sam goes on all kinds of adventures and magical worlds, and this is his first. But before we can actually start the game, we have to get all of his all of his little equipment things, which is kind of foreshadowing what we'll be doing for the whole game. The, th the thing about this game is, I believe this is the first ever humongous game where they introduced the idea that everything, like the game, has several different um, stories, or I, I don't know, story paths. I mean. So, every, t every time you play the game, there's a good chance you're going to be playing a different version of things, so it adds some replay value, because every time you play the game, you're going to find a new thing you can do that, you know, a new puzzle or whatever that you can do. So, you might get lost. Like, you might breeze through the first playthrough, but the second one, maybe not. But then again, these are children's games, so... Probably won't get too lost. I mean, I played this game before, so I know all the different things to do. But you know, maybe it, I, it, it took me an hour to record all this game. That's mostly because I wanted to show as much as I could. But you should be able to beat the game really fast. It, it is a kid's game, but you know, a kid might have a longer, might need a longer time to do it. Whatever, he's going to the Land of Darkness, where he will face off against Darkness. This is his land. Uh, okay. And, as you can see, it's kind of his closet, and you can see a sort of transition from being Sam's closet to being this magical land. So you see all of his stuff, probably all his stuff he might have lost at some point. But here's all of his stuff just lying around, like a giant catcher's mitt. Oh, and also, you in Humongous Games, you can interact with environments and just click everything, and there would be this little animation happening. And sometimes, multiple animations. You'd be like, oh, wow, I wonder what this bat is going to do this time, or something like that. Oh, I'm sorry, I was drinking some water. If it sounded like I made a horrible noise, I'm sorry. But I was just drinking some water. But anyway, these are point-and-click games. You should be familiar with what a point-and-click game is. I mean, they're... They're kind of, sort of, making a comeback in some ways. But, you know, you collect things, and... They help you progress through a story. They're not really action games or anything. You don't have to worry about dying in a point-and-click game, usually. But, generally, you just want to... You know, not really click on everything, but just try to get everything you need, and just think, just, just think, 
Okay, what do I... What will I need to get that object so I can progress to the next point in the story? But anyway, these trees, they basically steal Sam's junk, and Sam can't do anything without that crap, so you have to collect all that stuff and eventually face darkness. He, of course, needs the mask to conceal his identity. He needs the lunchbox to... Well, okay. He needs the flashlight to defeat darkness, and then he needs to collect darkness in the lunchbox, so, you know. I'm gonna do that. This is a pretty easy challenge. You just gotta get him down from the rope. You shouldn't have any trouble figuring that out. Just click the rope. I mean, eh. Whatever. And then there's this one blue tree that uh, doesn't really have any bearing on the plot. I don't know why they added the tree here, this blue tree character. I guess maybe they just wanted to say, well, not all the trees are evil in darkness, just, just those dickish ones, but this blue tree is a nice tree, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really, but she doesn't really do anything in the plot at all. I don't know why they had to add the blue tree, but whatever. You know, I, to me, when you're doing something, all the characters should have some important bearing on the plot, but uh, I, I'm just talking about a blue tree for some reason, just going on forever about this blue tree. Whatever. I just think maybe they could have had her do something. I mean, uh, whatever. But she's apparently really uh, forgiving when she fears that her rope is lost forever. She says she can get a new one. I I guess well, I don't I don't know how they how you hang a rope from yourself, but whatever. I guess something I should have mentioned earlier is that there's a bunch of socks scattered all over the place, like right there, that you collect, I guess, if you want to. I don't... I've never collected them all, so I don't know if there's some extra ending thing going on with it, but, you know, uh, just collect them, I guess. I've never collected them all. I don't think I'm going to be able to collect them all. So, just... just... If you see him, pick him up, but you're probably not going to be able to find them all. Because you'll still be able to beat the game without those f***ing socks, so... Okay, um, I know this is a kid's game, and I know I probably shouldn't be saying the F word during a commentary. Maybe I'll censor it, but, yeah. Because, you know, a kid might get this game. Because these games are still circulated and stuff. I'm pr Atari owns the rights to Humongous, so... These games are still circulated. You can still get them. I'm pretty sure they're still being printed. And, of course, this game is for the Wii, too. So, I'm guessing maybe a kid will watch this video, possibly. Be like, oh, I, I'm stuck on this one part. I think I'm going to watch this YouTube video to help me out. And then he hears the F word. And I pretty much ruined that child's vocabulary forever. I think I said vocabulary. Oh, I mean vocabulary. Uh, I don't even know what I said. Oh, my God. I was saying it right that time, but... No, the first time I said vocabulary, it came out weird. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Otto, the boat. I forgot to... Otto is is convinced that wood can't float, so he's convinced that even though he's a boat, he will not be able to float. Because some guy who told some guy told him he can't float. You know, he he's, he's always been a boat, so you'd think at some point he had to have been floating at some point, but whatever. You just need to get that wood that I got earlier to convince Otto he can swim or float or whatever. And then that when they're looking our way, ah, ha, ha. I always thought that was kind of funny. Though it's, uh, whatever. Oh man. Here's this, um, this bridge guy, he won't let you through unless you get a certain object later on in the game. But you don't need to go through... You don't need to go over this bridge to do anything in the game. 
the bridge leads to a completely optional area, so you could just skip the bridge if you don't want to do what's there, because it's kind of pointless. It's just, it's just there as a side thing you can do. So, you know, if you don't want to bother, then don't bother. So, yeah. Alright. Uh, yeah, well, you're going to need to go into that outhouse at some point. But first, we're going to go down the waterfall. You know, you want to visit every area and just... That's the first rule. Every area you can go to in a point-and-click adventure game, you want to go to all the areas and just explore. You don't want to just be like, Oh, oh I'm lost. I need, maybe, obviously, what I need to get past this part is in the area I'm already in. No. Uh, I know what I'm saying is obvious. You want to explore in a point-and-click adventure adventure game, but, you know, some people, some, some people aren't used to these types of games and don't really, they're, they're not as common as they were in the 90s, because in the 90s, they were, there was a lot of experimentation as far as having a, ha having like an interactive adventure story goes, there's a lot of, oh, we're gonna make our games like a movie and this is the closest way we can do it with the technology we have today. So, yeah, but now, games with amazing, super amazing graphics and stuff, uh, point and, click, point, point and click games are less common now, but they're kind of making a comeback with um, Telltale Games. They did the Back to the Future games, Walking Dead. Walking Dead was pretty good, but I heard their Jurassic Park game wasn't that great, but I, I actually played the first chapter of that game, and yeah, it it was, it wasn't, well, it's, I guess I can't really call that game a point-and-click adventure game so much, it's really just, um, like, Heavy Rain, where there's lots of, what are they called? Uh, quick time events, yeah, quick time events. Lots of quick time events in that game. In fact, it, that game is mostly qu quick time events, but there are some occasional uh, points where you're actually being doing a point and click adventure type thing, like in Walking Dead. But yeah, I'd, I'd suggest get Walking Dead though, because there are quick time events in Walking Dead, but there's a lot more of. Quick time events are only the action sequences in Walking Dead. There's a lot more. Um, there's a lot more point-and-click adventure type sections in Walking Dead, and there's also some Mass Effect style, you know, uh, story point sequences where you're having dialogue or you're making choices or whatever. So yeah, that's a point-and-click game that I would suggest you get if you want to get into point-and-click games at all. But it, it won't prepare you for like a '90s point-and-click adventure game though. They're point and click games, or I guess just adventure games in general, they've changed to the point where they're, they're a lot less clunky compared to older games. You know. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I guess I should be continue talking about the game, Pajama Sam. I skipped a part where you have to go past those trees, those snooty trees, by wearing a log. I, I didn't talk about that, but you need to wear the log nearby and just walk past them. I think at a certain point, Pajama, pajama Sam... I said jam. But Jam and Sam at some point takes it off, maybe, or something, but... I don't know. But, you don't... Re you, well, it depends. You usually don't need to go past those snooty trees. But, if the story calls for having that carrot guy, the salad liberation front guy, then yeah, you're gonna need to go past those trees, which I'd had to do to meet the carrot dude. So, yeah. You're gonna... You're gonna need that carrot guy for a certain point in the game. Actually, I think the carrot guy is mandatory in this game. I... I don't know if there's... I, I know the carrot guy doesn't appear in the second game as far as, like, he... He can appear in the second game, but he doesn't always appear in it. I, I could be confused between this game and the second game, but... Whatever. Uh, I, I think the crab... Oh, 
uh, swearing again. I think um, a bad part about let's playing this game, especially if someone might be lost on a certain part, is if is if you're watching a let's play of this game and you're trying to figure out how to get past a certain part, and in the let's play they don't get to the part that you're lost at, it could suck because you're not gonna you're not gonna know based on that let's play because they might not have to do the same things as you're gonna do, and that kind of isn't great. Like, I played the cave recently, and I got stuck at a few parts, and that game has multiple characters with multiple different ways to do certain things, so one person's let's play might be completely different from yours, or just slightly different, or whatever, so you might be stuck on a certain part, and you might want to look at a certain let's play, and they don't get to the part that you're stuck at, so you're just like, oh man. Yeah. So. Oh well. Oh well. Anyway, I, there's two ways of travel through the through the left and right sections of this game, and you know, on the left you have this guy, Mud, who's a minecart, and he is stuck on the tracks because he's rusted pretty badly he's old so he needs some he needs some lubric lube lubrication he's it's this game is kind of kind of like a wizard of oz thing going for it but you know but so, well, the only thing that's definitely like the wizard of oz is the fact that you need to use this oil can to help mud travel through the mines once more ah. and it just disappears I don't know if that's how it actually works in real life I'm pretty sure it's not but whatever he's free again and we can travel through the mines all right and if you if you click on the click on the street light that's randomly there you can just like the green if you click on the green part, you'll have relish pop out. If you click on the yellow part, you'll have mustard pop out. And if you click on the red, you'll have ketchup pop out. I don't know. I always thought that was kind of funny as a kid. But whatever. Sometimes I think there's a... On these uh, minecart sections, sometimes there might be a... When you're automatically moving, there might be a sock. So you're going to want to see it and click it really fast before you leave the automatic section. Just as a little pro tip, yeah, the, the, the collecting all the socks is slightly annoying when you're in the minecart because you're automatically traveling through certain places, so you need to be able to click really fast on the sock before it goes away, so, or else you're going to have to go back. But, oh, oh, whatever. You don't really need that pickaxe at all for anything important. That's that pickaxe is completely optional. It's it's to help you get to get across the bridge, get to the point across the bridge, but you don't need to get it. So if you don't want to go across that bridge, uh, then it's not necessary. I don't know why I went back. Oh, I guess I went back. Oh yeah, I got a a sock. Yeah, this is a commentary. It's not a live let's play, so. And it's been a while since I recorded this, so I don't remember every little thing I might be doing, but I know why I went this way. It's to get the optional gold that will help me get across the optional bridge. And see, yeah, I got that sock right at the last second. Eh. No sock here, as I can see. Alright. But I know I don't get all the socks, sadly. I know that for a fact. But I do get this optional gold that I don't need to get. But I can get anyway. Let's grab it. Of course you need the pickaxe. And then once you got that gold, you're home free. You just head head straight to the bridge if you want to. Here we go. And uh, the animation for this game is 2D. Humongous, as far as I know, never went to CGI, even towards the end of its life as a company. And I'm pretty sure this is hand-drawn animation. It just looks pixelated because of 
the limitations of CDs at the time or whatever. It's... It's... It's good. It's... Some of the animation is pretty crude. I... It's not like a Saturday morning cartoon quality, but, you know, it's pretty good. It's, I mean, for a video game, it's better than most, I'd, I'd say. I, well, I don't know many games that have hand-drawn animation. Usually they're just either pseudo-3D or something like that. Eh, whatever, I'm rambling. Okay. Those, those Red Sox look totally identical. I don't know why I thought, though, that three could fit, but whatever. That's the end of uh, this part of the commentary. If you liked it, that's great. So, you know, like it, like this part. If you want to subscribe to the Sequence Breakers, you, uh, you are totally invited, man. You can totally just join up. And, you know, if you want to, if you really like this, you can just favorite it. Yeah, I, I'd say favorite it. You, you can also share this with your friends, because I'm lonely and I need more friends in my life. Ah, uh, the friends of the Sequence Breakers. So, you know, check us out. Check out our other videos. And I'll see you later. Okay, um, I, I really apologize for all of this.